This is a CNBC original documentary, The eBay Effect, Inside a Worldwide Obsession. Here to perform his song, eBay, please welcome Weird Al Yankovic. A Smurf TV tray I bought on eBay. The economy's changing. Something like 400,000 people make some money trading on eBay. I'm told they're on eBay. Thanks to eBay. It won't be on eBay, I can assure you that. <laughs> what? I bought on eBay. A car is up for sale on eBay that is said to be the used car of the new pope. <laughs> on eBay. 24 hours left to bid on eBay. And it got me thinking what else I could put up on eBay. I'll buy, I'll buy. Since I've been doing eBay, I've probably spent in the neighborhood of $5 million on collectibles. Twice a year I go to Europe, twice a year I go to Asia. And it is these kinds of trips where it is, you know, four or five cities in four or five days. We know the page views per day, we know the listings that they're generating. Almost all of the information that any customer has ever generated, uh, we, we keep it. Utilizing something like eBay, you may be doing that at your peril. In the last five years in a row, there's been a price increase every year, despite the fact that eBay has record-breaking profits. We're doing the work, and we're building the site, and they're exploiting the community. Anybody that's ever asked me about eBay, I've just told them about my bad experience and uh, recommended against it. While it has been the subject of some controversy, eBay is one of the most successful companies in the history of U.S. business. This year, eBay will be 10 years old. During its lifetime, it has grown faster than any company ever. It now runs a global online marketplace where more than $40 billion worth of cars, clothing, computers, and anything else you can think of, and some you might not, will be traded this year. 430,000 people earn all or most of their income from selling on eBay. If they worked for the company, eBay would be the second largest employer in the country after Walmart. eBay conducts more transactions every day than either the NASDAQ or the NYSE. It has more more regular users than American Express has cardholders. Over $80,000 worth of goods and services change hands on the site every minute. Perhaps no company has created more opportunity for its customers. One reason why their loyalty runs deep. Every year, they flock here to eBay Live, where buyers and sellers from around the world gather for a three-day celebration of their eBay. Good evening, I'm David Faber. Tonight, we take an unprecedented look inside a company that in a remarkably short time has woven itself into the fabric of American culture and beyond. Some of the stuff we found on eBay. This is a picture of Jesus signed with Jesus' autograph. We've had nuclear bombers, submarines, Soyuz space capsules. This is a Dorito chip that looks like the Pope's hat. <laughs> Um, grilled cheese sandwich with the picture of the Virgin Mary in it. I think that was really funny. Jennifer Wilbanks, you know, the runaway bride, found on my toast. Look at that. This is the eBay you've probably heard of. That website where bizarre headline-grabbing items are for sale. But the business of eBay is not about grilled cheese sandwiches with the Virgin Mary on them. This is the story of the eBay you don't know. It's 7.30 a.m. in California's Silicon Valley. Meg Whitman, CEO of eBay, married mother of two, and often called the most powerful woman in American business, pours a bowl of cereal. Says goodbye to her dog. Makes her way onto the freeway. And sits down at her cubicle. Bring your kids to work oh, Do they want me to do my thing? Yeah. When I say to you, what is eBay? What do you say? 
I say it's the first global online marketplace that connects buyers and sellers 24 by 7 across the globe and has fundamentally changed the way people think about trade. No one was talking about global trade when Whitman took over as eBay's CEO seven years ago. Back then, eBay was just a small website where people traded Beanie Babies. Today, its corporate headquarters is located on two sprawling campuses in San Jose, California. Definitely there are tools that can help drive some traffic for you. There's a customer service center in Salt Lake City and 20 offices throughout the world. It has 9,000 employees and 135 million customers. This year, 1.8 billion items will be listed for sale on eBay. About 120 million of those listings will be in eBay stores, a place where sellers can show all of their items. Every time an item goes on the site, eBay gets a fee. When it sells, eBay gets another fee. There are listing upgrade fees, picture service fees, store fees, and more. On average, eBay's take on the sale of an item is roughly 7% of its price. It also collects fees from its online payment processing company, PayPal. This year, all those fees will add up to about $4.2 billion. And at any minute of the day, eBay knows exactly where its money is coming from. Well, we know the page views per day. We know the listings that they're generating per second, actually. Tom Keevan oversees eBay's network operations center, the place where eBay is always watching. We know the output per second uh, that our customers are generating. We know the number of registrations per second, the number of bids. So we monitor that to see if there's any issues whatsoever, and we'll go ahead and address the issue. Over here is actually our aggregate traffic graph, and that traffic tells us how much traffic we do for the day on eBay. And this is the one where we can actually track social events. You can see there's a dip. That's actually the American Idol show, and it lasts for about two to three hours as it cycles through from the east to the west coast, and then our traffic comes back. How customers long do you doing? keep information for? Uh, for our customers, yeah, uh, we pretty own. much have almost all of the information that any customer has ever generated. Uh, we, we keep it. If someone registers on eBay, it goes into these data centers instantaneously. All their account activity, anybody who's searching or trying to view an item within eBay, all that information stored within our data center. So if they click on that... Keevan and his crew are not the only ones watching. eBay's employee ranks are filled with fresh-faced MBAs, all of whom are working towards the common goal at the company, getting more people to buy and sell. Steve Grove is in product marketing. What this tells us is within this time frame, this many visits came to our site, and then from there, what do they do? What do they do? And we can pull up the, um, the path flows and see immediately where people are having issues and minimize these exit rates. I bet you there are uh, ways to optimize the page design. And just this product team discusses a relatively so new addition to the site, Want It Now or Win. The feature allows buyers to tell sellers what they want to purchase. And we know that one out of every two win bids results in a successful transaction. eBay is different from virtually any other company. Its business relies on the hard work of hundreds of thousands of people who sell on its website. People it doesn't pay a dime. They are endlessly referred to by eBay's employees as the community. eBay may not pay them, but it does understand their significance to the bottom line. So about 10 times a year, the company brings in buyers and sellers from around the country to find out what they like and don't like about eBay. It's called the Voices Program, and it is the mother of all focus groups. It lasts two days and nights and beyond. eBay consults with Voices members even after they leave San Jose. At first I thought it was a joke that one of my friends were playing on me. Uh, then I confirmed that it was really happening, and we had a free trip out to San Jose. I'm a housewife. Mm -hmm. so I can be on from anywhere from 8 to 12 hours a day. I'm uh, an attorney with the Marine Mammal Commission. You know, it's very, very important for us to work closely with our community, hear what you need, and also figure out how we can work with you to build the best platform possible. So Members are not level. shy about but voicing their opinion. Some people do get help from live help, mm -hmm. but mostly 
Uh, They're clueless. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of a nice way of putting it. No area, no matter how arcane, is off limits. It's not a major deal. I'll type and not be saying what I want to say, so I'll want to cut and paste and put it in a word, and you can't always do that. So I'll, I'll take that one back and push it, because that, that should be a fairly straightforward product fix. The talking goes on right through dinner, and even eBay's CEO listens. Oh, you got friends. Oh, wow. Best friends. Because if you're not listening to the community, they can become downright unneighborly. Later on the eBay effect, the community voices its outrage. There are a lot of people really, really ticked off at you to say, I'm done, I'm not coming back. What do you tell those people? What is this main artery of the information superhighway? It's called the internet. The net, as it's known to those who surf it, is a vast... When it went public three months ago, its stock opened at $18 a share. Yesterday, it closed at $203 a share. Only three years after it started, eBay and its then ponytailed founder, Pierre Omidyar, had become a darling of Wall Street and the media. By that time, the origins of eBay had become the stuff of legend. It's one of the fastest growing marketplaces in the world. Like, like every creation myth, there, there's an element of truth. But the truth is, it wasn't the Pez dispensers. Uh, my wife did collect Pez dispensers. She was very passionate about it. The passion that people have for collectibles was really a, a key sort of learning piece for me. Omidyar, now 37 years old, is one of the world's richest men. A former software engineer, Omidyar invented eBay in his spare time because he had an interest in efficient markets, not Pez dispensers. You know, at the time in 1995, uh, companies were coming onto the web and they were really looking at it as a, almost as a new distribution channel and how can we sell more stuff to more people. But nobody was looking at it from the point of view of how can we use this medium to bring power to the people. And I just thought, hey, you know, this is interesting. We could do something neat here, create an efficient market. And so that Labor Day weekend, all those ideas uh, came together and uh, I sat down Friday afternoon after, after work. Uh, put some uh, very basic code together, and by Monday morning, Labor Day, 1995, um, I had the basic site up and running. eBay has been running ever since. Hey, welcome back for another week of eBay Radio. We have Rallying the user base, Jim Griffith is eBay's mascot. Uncle Griff, as he is known, was one of the company's first employees. One of the things you had to do when you um, started work with eBay back then is uh, you got a little allowance and you went down to Office Depot and you bought a little desk and you put it together yourself. I remember it was cramped and I remember we had a lot of fun. We were on a mission. We thought this was an incredible experiment and, and a new way of doing commerce. Should there be police on the information superhighway? Because it was a new way of conducting commerce, it made some users nervous. There was a, quick, a tendency for people to distrust each other very, very quickly. Omidyar tried to deal with customers' complaints himself, but was soon overwhelmed. And I said, let's come up with a new system that if you want to complain about somebody, don't complain to me privately. So I put together the feedback form and I said, now you have a forum where you can complain about other people. But at the same time, let's think about giving credit where credit is due to. Feedback a system where buyers and sellers rate each other on the quality of their dealings, while not perfect, has been crucial to eBay's success. The history that feedback scores provide and the trust they inspire present a large barrier to entry for any competitors. Luis Cabral runs the economics department at NYU's Stern School of Business. There are two things about eBay that even within the world of internet commerce set it apart. One is the fact that it's primarily an auction marketplace. But second, and perhaps even more importantly, the fact that it has this feedback mechanism that has created the possibility of, of trust within a very large community of essentially anonymous traders. By 1997, propelled by the explosion in internet access, eBay's user base grew rapidly. Rosalinda Baldwin would later become an outspoken critic of the company. But in 1997, she and many others like her had discovered a new world. 
it was wonderful. We had a community. We were building this trading site, this, this marketplace where individuals could trade across the world on an equal basis, where anybody could open up a business and buy and sell online. eBay had quickly grown beyond Omidyar's ability to manage it. <laughs> Enter Meg Whitman, a Harvard MBA who was running marketing for Hasbro's Mr. Potato Head in Play School products. She had first declined to interview at a fledgling.com she'd never heard of. And even when she decided to visit eBay, Whitman didn't exactly have high expectations. I was really happy to see a receptionist <laughs> when I showed up. We had just hired a receptionist because we thought it'd be a nice idea to have a receptionist when we had CEO candidates come in. I uh, you know, wasn't sure what I was going to find. And in the course of that morning, learned a couple of things that I sort of went, ooh, it's interesting. Um, one was that, you know, it was already kind of a vibrant site. And so I saw some real potential. You guys hit it off. Is that fair we, to say? We, we absolutely did. Yeah. Now, is it true that you looked at the balance sheet and said, whoa, nice gross margins? And you said, what's a gross, gross margin? <laughs> That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty much. That's it. That's right. I remember. Yeah, I remember you were in the office and uh, you had said, uh, you know, I want to come. This was interesting. I want to come spend a day with your chief financial officer. I was thinking, well, why would anybody want to do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was already sold on the concept, but because I came from, you know, really the old economy as it was termed at that time, I said, and exactly how are we making money in this business? And is there a business model here? So I said, I really want to spend, you know, three or four hours with the chief financial officer who had just converted from uh, part-time to full-time. Right, right. And um, after a couple of hours, I said, ooh, this is actually a great business model. Yeah. Next on the eBay effect, fraud victims strike back. He denied any knowledge of us. He said he'd never been on eBay or hadn't been on eBay in years and years. He had a gun on the table. The final preparations for a trip to a Las Vegas courtroom, where Scott Moser, Ed Ryan, and Fred Bohm hoped to recover $1,500 they lost to a thief on eBay. Last December, the trio bought a camera for their fledgling production company. Starting out as a small company, you know, fifteen hundred dollars takes a long time. To All make. the money that we make, or most of the money that we make, goes back into the company. Yes, yeah, that, that was the little bit that was left over. Yeah. yeah. We've been looking for about a month for a Canon XL 1S, and finally found that at a good price. We checked out the seller. They had some sales in the past. All their feedback was positive. So we assumed that they were a trustworthy seller and we felt confident making the bid. So we won the bid and uh, sent the money out and next thing we know there was no camera coming back towards us. The group says they contacted the seller, David Harkai, who kept telling them the camera was on the way until the check was cashed. After that, their emails went unanswered. We had worked very hard for the previous year producing our first film for our company and this was all the profits basically. I think we were all pretty mad. They contacted eBay. The only thing we got an automated response from them basically saying that they'll look into it and then close down his account if they did find him guilty. They eventually did after weeks of all of the victims of this guy emailing them consistently they finally shut down his account, but not before he had a couple more transactions go through. But that didn't get them their $1,500 back. The only way we could go after this is actually go after them ourselves. They drove to Las Vegas and confronted Harkai at his apartment. He denied any knowledge of us. He said he'd never been on eBay or hadn't been on eBay in years and years. He had a gun on the table. It's been a few months, and now we're heading to Las Vegas to go to court. The vast majority of transactions on eBay don't end up with confrontations in court and firearms on a side table. eBay says fraud occurs in less than a hundredth of one percent of all its transactions. Others believe the company underreports the level of fraud. The old-fashioned con game still is alive and well now on the internet. eBay. Today, questions raised about some of its users. Laptop computers, digital cameras, plasma TVs, and more never delivered. 
Mark Seiden advises companies on their internet security. In the brief time we were with him, he found numerous items that were highly suspicious. Here's another one I found a few minutes ago. It's someone who was registered in Puerto Rico, but these goods are in Shreveport, Louisiana. It's a, a Canon camera, which you can buy it now for $3,000. Moreover, the listing is restricted to pre-approved bidders or buyers only, which means you have to email the seller to be on a pre-approved buyer list. This is a fraud alert. Certainly no argument that you can make you would think that eBay wants there to be fraud on the site. No, but they're certainly not taking enough effort to police it or to why, why do you think that's the case? I think it has to do with sales and revenue, and they're still fundamentally in denial. The marketing people think that the brand will be diluted if it's clear, if it's evident how much fraud there is, if they admit to it. Some people say you underreport fraud. They say you don't make it as available on the site in terms of your education tools as you might because you don't want people thinking that way. Well, I suppose at the highest level that, that may be true. There's a balance there, David. I mean, I suppose on the one hand, you don't want that to be sort of the marketing message of the company. But on the same time, you actually want the bad guys and the community to know that we're watching, we're going to catch you, and we're going to put you in jail if we can find you and work with the police. What's it out of? Show Betty? Yep. Out of where? Texas. Rob Chestnut heads eBay's Trust and Safety Unit. We've got over a thousand employees around the world. It's their job to be watching the site 24 hours a day, seven days a week for suspicious activity. What we hear from a lot of people, though, who have different but similar experiences, they don't really get much of a response. They get an automated response saying, you know, try and resolve your difference or whatever it is, and then they don't hear from eBay again. But we do want to encourage people to work out their problems because, you know, most of the time when we get the first hint of a complaint, we get the parties together and they do work things out. $1,500 Canon video camera, uh, buyer in Colorado, seller in Las Vegas, certified checks sent to the seller. Ultimately, they never get the item. They take matters into their own hands because they say they really didn't get much help at all from eBay. Yeah. Actually, in this case, eBay looked into the case after it was reported as actually able to determine that this case was related to a couple of other fraud cases on eBay. eBay has even gone to law enforcement for this particular buyer and gotten the case accepted for investigation. But there are people who look at that experience and say, ultimately, if you rely on eBay to really get anywhere for you in a, in a decent amount of time, you're out of luck. Most of the time, we're able to prevent a problem like this from occurring in the first place and get the listing off the site. So yeah, and when I hear about a case like this, it's disappointing because we didn't do our job. eBay has two major bases of operation for its trust and safety efforts, one in San Jose and another in Salt Lake City. Laura Haddock's job is to scour the site of potential fraud. Now here's one, for example, that I'm looking at that is a Picasso, and it's actually a reproduction Picasso. He's put reproduction in the item specifics, but he hasn't listed it according to eBay's policy, which says, you know, if you're going to list a reproduction of a famous artist, then you need to put repro or reproduction in the title, so I'll, I'll be removing this item from the site. But despite these kind of efforts, Seiden says eBay could do a much better job patrolling its site. I'd recommend a lot more automation in the fraud screening. Hire people who've done risk management for banks and credit card companies to build these systems. Because the patterns, if I can discern the patterns, a well-constructed program can discern the patterns. eBay has invested millions of dollars into that kind of a software. We have it. It's constantly being updated. Do you just not have enough people watching so that stuff can get removed immediately that would hit an alarm button? No, we, we actually have a large number of staff around the world. Part of the issue is that when you go to eBay and list an item, your item appears immediately on the website. So our security system may detect something the moment it's listed, and then later on in the day, someone, the team will take a look at it, and if necessary, we pull it down. eBay also urges buyers to use PayPal, its payment processing system that provides up to $1,000 of insurance. You must, though, have thought about the idea of, all right, We'll just insure everything. Yeah. It must have occurred to you, and you must have decided not to do it. Why? They can have the law of unintended consequences, that if everything is insured, what does that say about what the bad guys can do? The bad guys could also be buyers and say, you know, and actually be on both ends of those sides of that transaction. So there, can, there could actually be a situation where if you insure everything, actually you increase the total fraud on the site. When the eBay effect continues, getting their day in court. Do you swear that the money you're about to give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Yes.
After several frustrating months, Scott Moser, Fred Bohm, and Ed Ryan finally get their day in court. If I may, Your Honor, run through the sequence of events. Seeking $1,500 from the man who sold them a camera on eBay, but never delivered it. I'm looking at uh, an eBay account. It has your name at 3108 Ivory Coast. Is that your address? No, it's not. What, what's 3108 Ivory Coast? Do you live there? No, I don't. You have that uh, address on your driver's exactly. license. Exactly, that's my mother's house, but I never lived there. When I asked you about this address, you acted as if you had no knowledge of this address and it came as a complete surprise to you when in fact it's your mother's address. So what I'm going to do, based on what I'm seeing today, I'm going to find for the plaintiff, uh, I'm going to award the sum of $1,507.15. Obviously, so utilizing something like eBay, you may be doing that at your peril. Thank you, Your Honor. We're extremely happy. Ear to ear smiles here. We think this is the end for our future dealings with eBay. And far from Las Vegas, in a sleepy Texas town, lives another disgruntled former member of the eBay community. We got an RS Pressure Bowl, lock KK. RS Pressure Bowl. Five dollars, seven and a half, seven and a half, now ten, ten, would you be ten? Susan Lancaster used to sell the goods she won at local auctions through an online store on eBay. Now she sells on iOffer, a competing website. Twenty-two and a half, number three. Twenty-two and a half, number three. Yes. I think I do feel some anger because we did start with them. We put a lot of money in their pocket. Lancaster, who started selling on eBay in 1999, left the site after eBay hiked fees last February. It's kind of a betrayal because it started as a small company and they always said, oh, we're going to be for the sellers. We want this to remain a community. The $9.95 a month subscription rate for a store jumped to $15.95, and eBay increased its take on the first $25 of every store sale from a buck twenty-five to two dollars. The 10-day listing fee for items at auction went from twenty to forty cents. The fee hikes just keep going on, and they keep gouging, and the small sellers get squeezed out. So many people are turning away from eBay because there's a lot of dissension. <laughs> An online petition to protest the fee increase drew more than 20,000 signatures. Rosalinda Baldwin, once an avid eBay user, now runs a website that monitors online auctions and helps people navigate buying and selling on eBay. Baldwin says she was barraged with emails deriding the latest increase in costs. In the last five years in a row, there's been a price increase every year, despite the fact that eBay has record-breaking profits. So how can they say they're benefiting their community? We're doing the work, and we're building the site, and they're exploiting the community. They call you Fee Bay or Greed Bay. They say they feel betrayed by eBay. There are a lot of people really, really ticked off at you who say, I'm done, I'm not coming back. What do you tell those people? The price increase was very well thought out. We really think hard about what the right thing to do is for the greater good of this marketplace. According to Power Sellers Unite.com, that's a site run mm -hmm. by not happy former eBay sellers. You know, they say 7,000 eBay stores have shut down since the fee increase. Well, we wanted to balance the marketplace. What you've seen is that the store inventory format has grown remarkably rapidly. But what, what happens when a format grows too fast is sometimes a conversion rate can fall. That means fewer items for sale in the stores were selling. Bad for eBay's bottom line. So the company used fees to encourage sellers to move items from stores to the general listings format where things were selling. Did you pull back and go, well, maybe we pushed a little too hard this time? Well, we sat and we said, you know, have we done the right thing? Um, you have to remember, we are pioneering a new market. So we made a couple of quick changes. Um, the first thing we did is we lowered the final value fee for stores when a store owner brings their own traffic to that store. Retracting fee increases can quell some discontent, but frustration with eBay is not limited to dollars and cents. <laughs> If you call them up, half the time they have no idea what you're talking about on live help, or they put you on hold. It's worse than the IRS. Well, I think we have a tremendously dedicated group of customer support reps around the world. That said, I hear the same things you do. I think we have more to do there. I think our customer support can be more effective and we be can become more accessible than we have been. Wendy Jones is the Vice President of Customer Support North America. 
We average about 100,000 contacts a day. Our responses often come, comes across because we are handling so many as less personalized and less friendly as we would like. So there's a big initiative underway to address that a little bit more. Pause, give a deep breath. Don't take it personally and don't be defensive, right? Part of that initiative, classes for reps to handle calls more effectively. So if their account's been taken over, what's a question that we can restate? I'm sorry to hear that happen to you. I'm sorry to hear that happen to you. Let's see what we can do to get you set back up. Excellent eBay is unique among major corporations in that it must act as a referee with its own customers, running the risk of alienating the source of its revenue. I get these emails all the time from sellers. eBay shut me down. I am now out of business. People feel they've been suspended who did nothing wrong. It's a very delicate balance. Um, and we have a philosophy at eBay that we want to give people the benefit of the doubt. Now you have to be careful because if you've got a really bad guy and you give them the benefit of the doubt, they can do a lot of damage on the site. So it is an art, not a science. And sometimes we get it wrong. We have to get better at it. Again, I think we get it right most of the time. But trying to get it right often puts eBay in the Solomonic position of deciding which customers to believe. Dave Martin bought a $40 necklace on eBay for his wife last December, which he says arrived broken. I said, well, this is no problem. Here's our refund policy. Send it back within three days. So I did all that. No reply. No confirmation. Martin did some digging and discovered he was not alone. Over the past 30 days, there was something like, you know, 30 people that were unhappy. And over the year, almost 200 people. On the one end, you have a seller who's been with the, the site for five years and has over 10,000 satisfied customers. Now then you've got a buyer who's been a good buyer but also has had a couple of problems as there have been complaints against the seller. They've each got a different version. It's very difficult for eBay to act as a court and try to figure out who's right and who's wrong. How far is going too far in cyberspace? How about the woman who auctioned off the space on her belly? I came up with the idea from the man who sold his forehead for $37,000. There are many gray areas eBay has to deal with, including what can be sold on its site. And one I wanted to touch base on was the family for rent. Members of the Rules, Trust and Safety team meet to decide what items on eBay should be removed. I'm kind of uncomfortable with the notion of people renting out their kids uh, through eBay. This was an 18-year-old kid saying, I'll go be your prom date. So the tough thing that we have to deal with is, how do we distinguish between those and other types of date arrangements um, with, let's say, celebrities or something? We definitely draw the line where we don't allow any sort of sexual personal right. services. Recently, a lot of coverage in the idea of breast milk for sale. Is this a bodily fluid issue that we do deal under, or is it a transportation of food, consumable good in interstate commerce? The breast milk isn't packaged in a way that we require food to be packaged. And Anybody want to stand up for breast milk on eBay? Because I think this one is one we don't want. All right, no breast milk. But even saying no to breast milk or Nazi paraphernalia or guns can cause controversy within the community. We decided in early 1999 there were just some categories that we were not going to allow for sale. And interestingly enough, David, the community was up in arms. Not because they thought that handguns should be sold on eBay, but they were concerned, okay, so if eBay's making a judgment call about handguns, are they going to make a judgment call about a category that I care a lot about? And um, in the end, we said, you know what, it could be a slippery slope, but we're just going to make some judgment calls about some of these categories. The judgment of eBay's management will continue to be tested as it tries to do what's right for the company without alienating the community that it relies on. Coming up on the eBay effect, the quest for worldwide domination. If we were a nation, we would be the ninth most populous nation in the world.
twice a year, I try to get to Europe and touch as many people as I can and get as much data as I can. It is these kinds of trips where it is, you know, four or five cities in four or five days. Aboard a plane bound for Berlin, eBay CEO Meg Whitman prepares to address 200 of her company's European managers. And Matt and I have laid out who's doing what. Do you have the urge to do it right now? Do I have the urge to do it right now? <laughs> Although Whitman rarely passes up an opportunity for a laugh, there will be serious business on this trip. On Sunday and Monday, it's European business updates in London. Top sellers growing 19%. This is a very healthy tribute, I think, to the category management team's work. Tuesday brings a meeting with European-based analysts. Registered users ended the year at 135 million. If we were a nation, we would be the ninth most populous nation in the world. And if it's Berlin, it must be Wednesday. That address to 200 of eBay's top European managers, and later meeting and greeting employees at eBay's German headquarters. On Thursday, Whitman calls on EU officials in Brussels. About 37 percent of our volume on eBay comes out of Europe today. eBay hit the international scene six years ago. It now operates in 33 countries, and this year, roughly half of its revenues will come from outside the U.S eBay employs about 1,800 people in Europe alone, where it currently has 34 million users. 10 million of them are in the United Kingdom. This is an original head from the mummy. Should go for around $300. In the bucolic town of Berkham, England, lives a couple who make their living selling movie props on eBay. There's an original Bond gun. This is um, from my robot. This is one of the special effects pieces sitting on a suit of armor, which is from Lord of the Rings. And this piece is from probably the worst film ever made, but that makes it famous in its own right. Um, Jiggly with Jennifer Lopez. It went for nearly $400. The Harrisons spent some of the estimated $12,000 a month they make from selling on eBay, buying on it. Most of their kitchen, from granite countertops to the stove, was an eBay purchase. The last thing that I got was the fridge which um, I wanted an American fridge. I mean, over in the UK, it's, uh, it's like the latest and greatest thing to have. Last summer, um, it was very funny, when Sherry Blair, the Prime Minister's wife, went bargain hunting on eBay, and she bought an alarm clock for 99 pence. And then a lot of people said, if Sherry Blair is doing this, I can do it, and I can go to eBay. Doug McCallum is CEO of eBay UK. We've just finished our 17th straight quarter of triple-digit growth, so growth over 100%. It very much appeals to the British sense of bargain hunting and of competition. And just as in the States, people go to eBay to buy those hard-to-find items. Subway parts, anyone? There are some trains that are no longer made in Britain that the only place you can buy parts reliably is on eBay. Germany is eBay's largest market outside the U.S. It didn't take us long to find out why. Even our driver was an eBay user. Every two months I, I buy something and perhaps two or three times in the year I sell something. Oh, you sell too? Okay, yeah, I, I sell in music instruments. All my friends in, in school or university are uh, using it and um, it was very easy to use it. Easier than going to the store? For me, I'm very lazy. <laughs> In Germany, eBay found a perfect recipe for success. Avid consumers with broad-based internet access, excellent shipping and payment infrastructure, and a retail industry with restrictive hours. Even with all that, there are concerns that growth in the country is slowing down. Is Germany starting to top out? So we're actually very optimistic about our German market. We have a tremendous brand equity in Germany, which is evidenced by things like we're the leading e-commerce player, but also of all the e-commerce sites, we're the uh, site that half of the internet users visit every month. Lutz Dietz owns a store outside Berlin that sells all manner of tools. He's also been selling on eBay for the last four years. So you sell more on eBay than you do from the store to people yes, who come in? Yes, yes, yes. We sell um, everywhere in Germany, everywhere in the European Union. We have customers in Spain, Austria, France, United Kingdom, Ireland, or Sweden. 
Buyers and sellers here in Europe account for over a third of all the merchandise traded on eBay, some $12.5 billion worth in 2004. For eBay, it's just the beginning. It wants to create a colossal marketplace that lets individuals from anywhere in the world trade virtually anything with each other. eBay entered Asia four years ago. While its largest market is South Korea, it is China that holds the promise of enormous growth. I make two trips to China every year, sometimes three. And what I do when I come is work with our teams, you know, understand the status of the business, what they're doing, and um, try to, you know, help strategically. And then also do some government meetings as well as some corporate communications, public relations, things like that. eBay added more users in China in 2004 than it did in the UK or Germany. More than 11 million Chinese have been eBay customers, and its user base grows by 20,000 people every day. Our view is that one of the defining characteristics of winning e-commerce companies globally over the next five to ten years will be how successful they are in China. So this is a market that we want to make sure we have a terrific position in. People in China are looking for much the same thing as eBay users everywhere. Sure Jia has been selling cosmetics on eBay for three years. If I do not open a shop on the, on eBay, I will have some company life, not as free as now. As I am a Soho eBay seller, I can get time and get some money. In early 2005, eBay announced it would invest an additional $100 million to develop its business in China where it faces significant competitive challenges from other auction-based websites. The goal is to prevent what happened in another major Asian market. We were six to eight months behind the lead competitor in Japan, which is Yahoo Auctions. And as a result, we don't have a position. But that was, you know, that was certainly um, something I wish was different. With or without Japan, some see eBay's international growth as a boost to the world's economy. Roger McNamee is a prominent Silicon Valley venture capital investor. There are many parts of the world where the retail economy doesn't work very well. They will develop big parts of their retail economy around either eBay or something that looks like eBay. You know, in the very earliest days, um, you know, I, no one could have imagined, you know, and I certainly didn't imagine, uh, how eBay has been so broadly adopted globally. I came to learn, though, that uh, trade is a fundamental piece of human nature. People all over the world want to do business with one another. But as it grows around the world, a key challenge for eBay will be encouraging trade between countries. Right now, 15% of all trades cross borders, a percentage that needs to increase if Omidyar's dream of a global village is to be truly realized. story on Wall Street, eBay. The stock once again tumbling. An abomination. The stock was annihilated. On January 20th, 2005, eBay lost $13 billion of its stock market value. It was the worst trading day in its history. The worry on that day and in the days that it followed is about growth. Can a company whose revenues expanded faster than any other in its first 10 years of existence keep it up? The company does need to maintain that really great environment for buyers and sellers. There are many people, I think, many more people who would buy on eBay today if it were just a little bit easier. For the first time in its brief history, eBay has hit some major bumps in the road. The slowing growth of listings in the U.S., disappointment with car sales in Germany, the outrage over fee increases, fear of fraud, questions about why the company needed another $100 million to spend in China. But at its once-a-year meeting with Wall Street analysts, Meg Whitman sounded a confident note. eBay's potential is stronger today than it has ever been. One month later, investors and eBay employees would wonder whether to believe her. The woman so closely associated with eBay's success had considered leaving to run another company. It was the only company in seven years that I've ever actually even returned the headhunter call for. And as you can imagine, I get lots. Um, and I think the reason was that I have a fond spot in my heart for Disney. I worked there for four years. I see the enormous potential of that company. It's an American icon. And I was persuaded by a couple members of the board to come down and at least hear out 
what they were thinking of, and then in the end ultimately decided that it was the right thing for me to stay right here at eBay. So those who would say, gee, she may not really think that much for the future of eBay, the company she's been leading, if she's willing to go over to Disney. What do you say to those people who just scratch their head? I decide to stay. <laughs> Yeah. Stay though she may, Whitman's challenge will be to keep eBay growing. One way to do that, acquisitions. Comparison shopping site Shopping.com, an online automobile classified ad company in Germany, a 25% stake in Craigslist, auctions websites in India and Korea, the purchase of Rent.com. All of these deals intended to bring more services to the website along with more buyers and give sellers more ways to access those buyers. eBay is also relying on PayPal. The online payments processor it bought in 2002 is designed to offer a more secure and convenient form of payment. Its key feature, letting individuals accept credit card payments. In markets where PayPal has a significant presence, eBay's business goes up. This year, PayPal will account for more than a quarter of eBay's revenue. And like eBay, PayPal has had its share of problems, including service interruptions and complaints about its buyer protection. Okay. Dave Martin used PayPal to buy that necklace that he says arrived broken. PayPal came back to me saying that because the chain was no longer available to be examined, that they couldn't do anything. So I explained to PayPal, I says, you know, naturally I can't, I don't have the chain because I had to return it, according to this guy's refund policy. His refund claim was rejected. They have this pretense of buyer protection for eBay and for PayPal, but it's not as good as the buyer protection you get from your credit card. They could do a lot better. As eBay moves into its second decade, Meg Whitman acknowledges there are areas for improvement. The thing to remember about eBay is it is only 10 years old, and, um, and yet we carry a market cap and, and probably a profile in the world economy that is far bigger than most 10-year-olds. And so I often say it's hard to make a 10-year-old act like a 20-year-old, and that's a challenge. I think we've come a long way. I think we have a long way to go to sort of fulfill the full potential of what this company can be. And what is that? eBay is already the world's largest online marketplace. It has already changed the lives of many of the people who sell on it. It has already achieved a level of financial success rarely seen in American business. Its founder has still grander visions. This has a huge social impact to individuals, and it's our responsibility to bring that to more and more people around the world. Connecting an individual, no matter where they are, no matter what language they speak, into an efficient marketplace where they have a market for the goods that they create, uh, I think that'll be hugely powerful. The idea of a skilled artisan in a developing nation selling his work into the global marketplace also remains largely that, an idea. But until Omidyar created it in his living room back in 1995, so was eBay.